like for for 3D gaming, but also for other advanced uh, content formats on the web, like you had to use plugins because there was no other way to do to do 3D graphics, to do to do video, to do interactive user interfaces. Now, uh, in recent years, this is changing. With HTML5, we're seeing that a lot of these capabilities get built into the browser directly, without the need for any plugins. So as a result, we see uh, browser vendors, uh, they start steering away from uh, plugins. They'd rather have people use, uh, use HTML5 APIs for their web pages than rely on proprietary uh, solutions based on plugins. Because that, that gives them more control, that, uh, that makes the web technologies more open. And the, browsers, the browser vendors, they have more control over, over their security. So we're seeing browser vendors move away from plugins. We've actually seen that Google, they announced last year that they plan to drop support for NPA API plugins completely in Chrome in the course of this year. Other browsers, they are moving in a similar direction, though they haven't been going that far. They ha nobody else has announced uh, dropping plugins. But in, uh, in Firefox and Safari, for instance, we start seeing that uh, plugins are like blocked behind security warnings where the user has to click on it to, uh, to run the content. So that means um, that plugin content is becoming less accessible, and uh, people have been asking us, like, how are you going to solve this? So, two weeks ago at GDC, we announced a new technology we, uh, we want to use to solve this, and that, that is WebGL. So, Let's look at what WebGL is. WebGL is a library to do hardware-accelerated 3D rendering in the browser, which is built into the browser, so it doesn't require any plugins. And it's a library which, is, uh, which you interface with using JavaScript. So the WebGL API it's closely based on OpenGL ES 2.0. So the API is it's almost the same, with some slight modifications to, uh, to conform to uh, JavaScript conventions, and a few restrictions uh, for security. WebGL is an open web standard. That means it's not a proprietary solution. It's not uh, controlled by a single entity, but it's being, uh, it's being developed and controlled by a consortium of uh, different parties, like more different browser vendors, but also other interested parties who are sitting together and deciding where to take this. <coughs> so currently, WebGL is implemented in Firefox, in Chrome, in Internet Explorer and in Opera, there's probably some others I missed. Safari has an implementation, but I didn't list them here because uh, currently it's disabled by default and hidden behind the developer menu. So, from our point of view, WebGL was always the, the perfect fit for getting, uh, getting Unity content to run on the web because it's, like, it's a seamless experience. People can, uh, can run WebGL content without needing to uh, install a plugin with no barriers. So we always thought it would be great if we had this, but we had a lot of doubt in the beginning whether this, whether this could be possible. But then, two years ago, we decided to just give it a try at a hack week. So, let me explain the concept of Hack Weeks at Unity. 
the Unity developer team is like very, uh, very much geographically distributed. We have people all over the world. So about uh, twice a year, we have the entire development team fly to Copenhagen, which is our biggest office. And uh, that's, then we get a chance to meet in real life. And during that week, we will drop our day-to-day -day work, and we will just find like, interesting ideas, interesting projects to work on. So during this week, we just like, get a chance to try out new things. They may or may not work out, but, but we can just like, figure out, try out ideas and see where that's taking us. So two years ago, we decided at a hack week to try if we could get Unity to run on WebGL. So then we talked to Mozilla, and they liked this idea so much that they sent an engineering team of their own to our hack week to join us. So at this first hack week, we were working on it for one week. At the end of the week, what we had was a web page you could open, and it had a blue screen. That was all. It's not that much, but the blue was the right color of blue as you have in an empty scene in the Unity editor. So, well, we figured that's something. So we figured, let's, let's see, let's try it, uh, some more, let's work more on it. So, over the course of some more hack weeks, we continued working on this. And at some point we saw, okay, this can work, there's some potential here. So we started going into uh, full production on this uh, and see, like, yeah, and try to get it running. Here's a picture of uh, like a group of Unity developers congregating in a meeting room in uh, Copenhagen to see like presentations of uh, of projects. So we started this two years ago. Now we're finally ready to show some results. So what I'm going to show now is a game called uh, Dead Trigger 2. It has been made uh, by Madfinger Games. They released it on uh, iOS and Android. So we took the project and we ran it through a WebGL exporter to, uh, to try this. So. Um, this is Dead Trigger 2 running in WebGL. It's running in uh, Firefox. There's no plugin. When I hit play, it will use the, the HTML5 full screen uh, API. Wrong button. So here's a lot of zombies coming at us. My favorite feature in this game is that you can drop a chicken with a machine gun to help you. Me Help. Me. Help. Me. Help. Help. Me. Keep me covered. Help. Cover me. Help. Okay, I'm not good at this. But what you can see here is uh, that you can have a very immersive uh, full screen first person shooter gaming experience running in a browser without using any plugins. It's, uh, yeah. So, 
I'm going to go into some technical details about how all this works, how we got this, uh, how, how we got this to function in a browser. Understanding this is not uh, necessary to use WebGL and Unity. I'm just, I'd like to talk about it because I find all this technology uh, we and other people have built around this so interesting and so humbling that I, I want to explain a bit about how we did it. So WebGL is a JavaScript API. That means in order to use WebGL, all our code has to be in JavaScript. So it means that we have to convert all the code we have into JavaScript. All the code we have, that's the Unity engine, our runtime code itself, which is written in C++. And it's uh, the user scripts, like the, your game code you write in Unity, which is uh, written in C Sharp or Unity script. So somehow we have to get this code converted into JavaScript. So I'm going to present some technologies here we use to do this. So first, there's mscripten. mscripten, it is a C++ to JavaScript cross-compiler. So internally, it uses the Clang compiler to compile a C++ code to LLVM bit code. And then it provides a custom uh, LLVM backend, which will emit corresponding JavaScript code, which then matches the behavior of the C++ code. So mscripten is an open source project. It was started uh, by Alon Zakai. He works at Mozilla. And on top of uh, providing this compilation tool chain, it also has a set of libraries to, uh, to wrap common web APIs to uh, corresponding C++ functions. So if you want to use WebGL using mscripten, you will just write your C code to use uh, OpenGL ES 2.0. And mscripten has, uh, has wrappers which map that to corresponding uh, WebGL APIs. Likewise, if you need to like, uh, s store data on disk, you can just use like, the POSIX file APIs, and mscripten has wrappers make mapping that to, uh, to HTML5 file APIs. So we use mscripten to cross-compile the Unity engine code to asm.js JavaScript. Now, uh, who has heard about asm.js before? Yeah, so that's one, two people. I'm going to explain what asm.js is. So if you look at uh, JavaScript running in a browser, typically browsers have uh, JIT engines dynamically compiling the JavaScript code at runtime. Now, the nature of JavaScript as a language uh, makes it a bit difficult for a JIT engine to make uh, best guesses on, on how to generate optimal code. A problem here is that uh, the JavaScript is a dynamically typed uh, language. So when generating the code, the uh, JIT engine, it won't know which data types it will be used on. It will, know, it will not know if any uh, numbers used would be floating point or integer, whether it should use floating point or integer math. So it cannot generate optimal code to... Uh, to run this as fast as possible. So, asm.js, it's a subset of JavaScript which introduces, uh, which uses some syntactical constructs of the JavaScript language to introduce static typing. And uh, this setup 
it allows the JavaScript engine to ahead of time compile the JavaScript code into very, very optimized native code. So using ASM.js, a browser which supports ASM.js can get much faster, uh, much faster execution of JavaScript. But because it is a subset of, of the JavaScript language, it retains full compatibility with existing JavaScript engines. Like ASM.js code, it will run on, on any browser whether it supports ASM.js or not. You only need the ASM.js support to get the performance boost. So ASM.js is also a technology which has been uh, built at Mozilla. It's been invented by Luke Wagner. And it's currently enabled in Firefox. So right now, Firefox is the only browser which has it. But I expect that, I expect that to change. I know that a lot of browsers are currently, like, a lot of browser vendors are currently looking at these developments. And uh, I think we will see uh, more vendors adopt this technology. I know that there's a browser called Maxthon. It's a small browser, but I know that they will announce ASM.js support uh, within the next weeks. But there's, uh, there's bigger browsers looking at it, so I believe we will see more of this in the future. So um, we use mscripten to compile the Unity engine into JavaScript code with ASM.js. But there's still the question, how do we deal with the user code? How do we deal with your C-sharp scripts? And that's a difficult question. Like, we, uh, we can't really uh, compile the mono runtime into JavaScript. So the solution we came up with is a new technology we built in-house. We call it IL to CPP. So IL to CPP is another cross compilation toolchain which takes uh, .NET bytecode which you get from compiling your C# -sharp sources and it uh, generates corresponding C++ files. So essentially we compile your C# -sharp code into C++. By doing that we can get the code to run on any platform which has a C++ compiler. And uh, with mscripten, that includes the web and JavaScript. So if we take all these pieces and put them together, like we can, we can get your C sharp uh, scripts and compile them to the web to JavaScript. So I will show how this code conversion process, how it looks. You start with your C sharp script. So what you have here is a mono behavior in Unity. It's a simple function implementing a mouse look behavior, like uh, where you can look around, uh, move the camera around with the mouse, like in a first person shooter. It has an update function here, which implements its logic. So this gets compiled by the c -sharp compiler into .NET bytecode, which, if we disassemble it, will look like, will look like this. This .NET bytecode we feed into our IL to CPP tool to generate C++ code. So the mouse look function, the update function in C++ will look like this. This gets compiled by Clang. It's LLVM bitcode, which again, we can disassemble, and then we have this. And then finally, mscripten will turn this into JavaScript. So here, as a result, we have a JavaScript function which matches the behavior of, of your game script. <coughs> There's uh, two things I'd like to point out in this function. If you look at line number two, 
you will see that it says I, uh, I1 or 0 with a bitwise OR operator. So the result of a bitwise OR operation like that is always an integer. And you will see this everywhere where it's doing some math, that it will always have this OR0 behind it. So this is a construct used in ASM.js to tell the engine that uh, these operations should all use integer math. So basically, this is how it, uh, how it declares a type, uh, how it declares these numbers to use integer logic. Another thing I want to point out, if you look at line number 21, you see that it accesses an array called heap32, which is a typed array which is used to uh, represent the memory, uh, like the complete memory we're working on in JavaScript. So that way we can uh, simulate like a, n a native handling of, of memory with pointers and everything, because we always index this array. So here we have JavaScript code which can run in the browser. When you publish your game, we do one, like when you make a release build of your game, we do one more step. We do a minification and optimization pass on the code. So the end result you would ship to your users is, has a much smaller download footprint and it's no longer human readable. So that was a little uh, discourse into the uh, technical details of WebGL and Unity. Um, now I, I'm going to talk a bit about what we plan to have in Unity 5.0, what we plan to, to ship. Uh, here you see the new build dialog in Unity 5.0. You can see we added WebGL. It says it's a preview, so I will talk a bit about that. You can also see that we discontinued the Google Native Client and Flash build options. So those are like now replaced by WebGL. So we will ship an early access version of uh, WebGL as an add-on which, uh, which will be available for purchase for Unity 5.0. So early access, it means it will allow you to deploy uh, Unity content to WebGL, but it will have some feature limitations in the beginning. And um, we will only support the desktop versions of Firefox and Chrome in the beginning. Uh, other browsers may already work at this point, but we will not officially support that case. So features which are not yet supported by WebGL and 5.0, uh, those include video, um, runtime uh, generation of substance textures, there's no networking, though you can do networking using the www class, uh, and we will also have web sockets. There's no support for microphones or webcams yet. There's no debugging of scripts. There's uh, no support for exceptions, no threads, and in general, scripting will be uh, limited to to what is possible with uh, AOT compilation. So those are the same limitations uh, you have on iOS where you can't uh, dynamically create code at runtime. So looking at performance, uh, WebGL will generally not be quite as fast as native code running in the web player. How much slower it is 
that uh, depends on the situation. It depends on the browser used. Different browsers have uh, different JavaScript engines. So uh, right now we're seeing uh, best performance in Firefox because it has uh, ASM.js. But uh, that may change. Uh, maybe uh, we'll see other browsers adapting ASM.js or finding other ways to accelerate uh, JavaScript performance. Then uh, JavaScript has n does not have uh, support for neither SIMD or multithreading. So any code which uses those, uh, will, you will see uh, larger gaps in performance uh, on that code than you'd see for other code. An example for that is uh, the mesh skinning in Unity, like uh, when, you, when you skin a character. That code is uh, heavily optimized to use uh, both SIMD and multithreading, so you will see that that's pretty slow in uh, WebGL. But um, I can say that overall, from what we've seen, uh, for like content we took and tested with our WebGL export, like uh, the Dead Trigger 2 game or other samples we tried. So everything we tried so far was at least, at least uh, half as fast in uh, WebGL as it would be like running natively in the web player. Now, um, you may say that like half as fast, that's uh, quite a big loss in performance, and it is, no question there. But if you think half the performance of a, of a desktop PC, that still allows you to do a lot of things. I mean, if you look at what kind of games are possible on mobiles, like uh, you can still do more than that with half of the performance of your desktop PC. And especially on the GPU side, you basically have full support, full performance uh, from the GPU. So you can, you can do some pretty advanced rendering and, uh, while it still runs fast in WebGL. And uh, we expect that to get better. Also, when you're working with WebGL, the Unity profiler is fully supported. So you can, uh, you can uh, profile your game in WebGL to, to optimize performance. <clears throat> Another thing is that um, we support plugins. So you can uh, write functions directly in JavaScript, which will then be executed directly by the browser's JavaScript engine. And you can just call these functions in your c -sharp script. As we are uh, cross-compiling via C++, you can also just add C++ source files to your, to your WebGL project. And they will be cross-compiled along with your other code. And you can just call functions in your C++ files. And uh, you can still use the application external call and external eval APIs. Like if you have been using the web player, the, these are the same APIs where you can just uh, call a string uh, and, uh, and evaluate, evaluate it as JavaScript. So that, this allows you to add some uh, capabilities which are missing. Uh, by yourself, like implementing, uh, like implementing support for other web APIs if you need to. So that is what we expect uh, to ship this summer in Unity 5.0. Looking a bit uh, further than that, what? I expect to see during the 5x uh, release cycle. I hope that we will, within maybe two more releases, uh, be able to drop the uh, early access label from WebGL. So I expect that most of the feature limitations I listed, uh, that we will be able to resolve them by uh, by doing some more work on our side and also by getting more support from the browser side. We also expect that uh, more browsers will uh, support 
the features we need to run WebGL content in Unity so that we can uh, have more supported browsers uh, in the near future. As for the Unity web player, for the time being, the Unity web player is still the most powerful and uh, widely, suppo widely supported solution for getting Unity content on the web. So we are not going to replace the Unity web player with WebGL at this point. We will keep supporting both technologies for at least the 5x release cycle. Um, at this time, it may be a good idea to actually deploy your content using both technologies in parallel so that you can choose which version to uh, serve to a user depending on like, which browser they have. Uh, so that way you can get the widest reach possible. Um, I do expect, though, that at some point in the future we will see that the Unity web player will have become obsolete because the browsers, uh, they will drop support for it. So when that happens, uh, I expect that we will, uh, we will discontinue the web player at that point. I don't know when that is, but I, I expect this to happen. So, looking at the developments I expect to see from a browser side, I expect to see that Microsoft and Apple, that they will get their WebGL implementations uh, working nicely with Unity. I know that uh, Microsoft is doing a lot of work on WebGL. They, uh, they were talking a lot about WebGL at uh, their build conference last week. I expect that Apple will drop the, uh, the having WebGL disabled by default. So we are talking to all browser vendors at Unity, and uh, we, are, we are working with all of them to make sure that this stuff is uh, going, to, going to work in their browsers. Then, what I expect to see in the course of this year is uh, WebGL 2.0. So uh, WebGL 2.0, it will have a feature set which uh, matches OpenGL ES 3.0. So it means you will get uh, much more powerful uh, graphics capabilities. And finally, about uh, SIMD and multi-threading support, I expect uh, I know that uh, the browser vendors, they are actively discussing like adding support for this to, uh, to JavaScript. I think they have not yet agreed on how they want to have these capabilities, but they have agreed that they want them. So I, I expect that we will see some agreement there, and I expect that we will see some implementations uh, showing up within the next year. So, when that happens, we will be able to, uh, to narrow the performance gap between WebGL and native quite a bit and get the WebGL code running uh, much faster than it is now. So, that's where I expect this technology to be going. And that also concludes my talk. So, lastly, I would like to thank uh, the WebGL team at Unity for, for their work on this. And I also would like to thank uh, the engineers at Mozilla for uh, driving this technology and especially for encouraging us to work on this uh, and to tell us, yes, this will work, please try it. So uh, they're great guys. And yeah, this is the end of my slides, so we have a few minutes left uh, for Q&A if you have any questions. There's one over here. Uh, 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 thanks for your uh, pre presentation. And uh, I heard that .NET Socket is not supported yet, and so for the... Uh, Excuse me, 
I think I'm on a wrong channel because I hear Korean. Um, sorry. I, I, I'm speaking English. Oh, sorry. sorry. I, <laughs> yes. sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, I heard that Danne Soket is not supported in now. Sorry? Danne Soket, I mean, oh, when, when playing web yes. network game. So do you have any alternative or easy advice? So, to... so for networking, um, we will not be able to support, uh, to support um, direct access to sockets like uh, TCP or UDP yeah. because uh, that, is not exposed, uh, that is not exposed to JavaScript. But um, we will have support for uh, web sockets, which uh, can be bridged uh, to existing TCP servers. And I also think that we will be able to add support for WebRTC, which is a more low-level, like uh, UDP-style protocol uh, for like real-time communication. Okay. So, so it will not always be uh, trivial to make this work with existing services, but it will be possible to set up uh, networking games uh, in WebGL. And on top of that, as I said, we have support for, for WWW class to uh, just use HTTP. Okay, thanks. Yeah. There's uh, one over there. Uh, I'm wondering uh, about the Unity WebGL support the uh, audio features. I heard about the uh, Web Audio API is existing, and that this did Unity support that or other alternative things. Um, I didn't get that. Can we put the volume up a bit? Or like... uh, uh, I asked about the web audio API. Oh, web audio. Yes. So, yes. so um, right now the uh, the uh, audio implementation we have in our WebGL support is based on web audio, uh, like the uh, that trigger two demo I showed. Uh, that's all like uh, based on web audio for audio support. Um. Currently, we only uh, expose a limited feature set of web audio. So what we have right now is, uh, is basically limited to uh, 3D positional audio. So like uh, all the new stuff uh, Wayne will be talking about later today, I think, uh, for having nice effects and uh, mixing, will probably not work in WebGL, at least in the beginning, in Unity 5.0. But... Uh, Web audio has, a, has support for not all but a lot of that stuff, so I expect that uh, we will be able to support a lot more than we do now in the future. Thank you. There's more here? I mean, also, if we run out of time, then... Uh, you can catch me like on stage or, or outside somewhere to ask more questions. Uh, my email address is also up here. But I think we have time for more questions now. Mm. Ah, I'm going to ask you a question. 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 그런 것 기능들이 구현될 예정은 없습니까? So uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, what do you mean by HTML5 as opposed to what uh, what I showed here? Like, do you mean uh, support for 2D canvas or Unity 안에서 HTML5로 표현된 웹 페이지를 볼수 있는 그런 환경 말입니다. Uh, so, so you mean like uh, rendering uh, web pages within Unity? Yeah. Um, no, there's no plans for that currently. 
I suppose that if you, if you make uh, content using uh, Unity WebGL, you might be able to set it up like, by just interacting with the browser and JavaScript to embed it. But there's no, uh, no planned support for, for that from our side right now. So there's one more here. Hi, I... Come on. I heard that you made uh, C Sharp to C++ cross compiler, but how about making a C Sharp LLVM compiler? Why didn't you try it? Um, that's, a, that's a good point, uh, because theoretically going directly to, uh, to LLVM would uh, skip a step in the uh, whole cross compilation tool chain. I think our reasoning for this is that uh, C++ is such a universal language that by being able to cross-compile to C++, we can practically take this anywhere. So this will be very useful outside of the domain of WebGL. Okay, so if that's it, yeah. Grab me around if you have any more questions. And uh, otherwise, like, uh, thanks for participating.